Today I am here responding to a previous argument made that states irresponsible, unregulated financial institutions cause the economic downturn. It is true that our current financial institutions were part of the problem, but it, it would be false to say that they were solely responsible for the downturn that has happened. During this speech, I will be refuting the claims made that banks were more concerned with their own profits than with the soundness of their dealings, and the claim that the unsoundness and non-regulation of those dealings led directly to the economic collapse. I, may, I am here to say that the issue is far more complicated than that, and such a statement cannot be made without taking into account the regulatory, the regulatory bodies uh, created by the government and the bust of the housing bubble. I will start off by refuting the statement that banks were more concerned with their own profits than with the soundness of their dealings. The, oppos the opposition chose to focus the majority of this argument on, explain on explaining why it was the bank's fault for setting up the sales of credit default swaps. But this, is, but this would not be an accurate statement. These, these credit default swaps initially were um, kind of like an insurance policy. If you, if you bought, if, if you're talking about, if you bought something and you were scared that the, the stock um, in your company would go down, you would buy a, a default swap. So if something happened to that company, you would get your money back. And these credit default swaps have been around since the mid-80s, early 90s. Initially, they were a good thing. Um, there was no problem with them. It wasn't until the housing crisis that um, they became a problem. And I will get into that later. Um, he, in his supporting points, he, used, he talks about how the banks lobbied together to um, keep these swaps from being regulated. And how that directly, and how that caused us to fall into an economic downturn. However, Alan Greenspan, the chair of the Federal Reserve, said himself in a congressional hearing that his biggest mistake was um, thinking that these financial institutions would be able to regulate themselves. Um, the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission, which was created in 1934 by Congress right after the Great Depression um, was made to just make sure that they could accurately disclose, that public companies would accurate, accurately disclose financial risks to investors. They failed. On two separate, uh, two separate occasions, Christopher Cox, the head of the Securities Exchange Commission, did not um, appeal, um, did not choose to appeal uh, <coughs> cases that were shot down by the banks as far as uh, regulating them, like, he, he felt it was unnecessary, and this was when the economy was strong. But when we did fall into our economic downturn, our lack of reg reg regulation surfaced. Um, according to Time Magazine, the SEC, Securities Exchange Commission, had plenty of power to go after big investment banks like the Lehman Brothers and Merrill Lynch for better disclosure, but it chose not to. Another regulatory body, Commodity, the <coughs> Commodity Futures Trading Commission, sought to regulate the, the swaps, but were shot down by the, by the Supreme Court. And once again, the SEC did nothing about this. Uh, made the statement that the federal gov it's the federal, federal government's fault for not um, regulating these institutions the way they should have been. Um, essentially, these banks were like a kid in the candy store. They were increasing their profits, and they did not have a parenting body to look over them and that caused, that was part of the problem. Moving on to my second claim. The opposition led us to believe that the bank's dealings led directly to the economic collapse. Once again, by dealings, my opposition was talking about the default swaps. However, default swaps did not directly cause anything. It was the burst of the housing bubble. Um, the housing bubble caused interest rates to go up and American consumers cannot hold on to the houses because they should not have been there in the first place with um, their income. They did not have enough money to pay the, the mortgage. And when they defaulted on their loans, that's what caused the financial crisis, um, not the other way around. Time Magazine said that the household debt across America is 130%, was 130% of income in 2007. Um, and that basically means we're, 
Americans were spending much, uh, way too much outside of their means, and they could not afford what they bought, and that led to the problem. Um, the greed of the American consumer t uh, to borrow and spend outside their means exacerbated the problem, not credit default swaps. In closing, I would like to say that yes, unregulated financial institutions caused problems for us, but by no means did they directly cause the crisis. The crisis was caused by the housing bubble and the lack of the federal government to um, accurately regulate the financial in institutions of America. Thank you. All right, you label the advocates' claims pretty clearly, and uh, on each of the points, you basically present a series of counterclaims. Uh, there's not an extensive analysis of the grounds that the advocate used, uh, but you generally argue uh, alternate causality on both of the points, and I thought that that was okay, uh, but uh, without uh, confronting the explanation that the advocate has, it's a little hard for us to uh, contrast your conclusion with the one that the advocate had. Although yours seems uh, very reasonable in this context, it would be a lot easier if we had more of that uh, contrast. In the debates, for instance, it'll happen right, you know, it'll be occurring right immediately after the prior speaker. Um, so we'll be able to see it a little bit more there. It's just maybe part of the formatting here uh, that creates a little bit of a problem there. I, I thought both of your uh, counterclaim arguments were uh, pretty nicely developed, although there were a couple of places where I couldn't understand uh, why you were presenting information. Uh, for instance, I guess the evidence from a Greenspan that says that uh, the industries could not self-regulate, well, that kind of feeds into the argument that the advocate was talking about, that they were greedy, they were not capable of being reined in. Your argument that at that point then tends to shift uh, the notion to uh, the SEC, and I thought you did a pretty good job developing uh, that particular point, except on the last part of that, uh, there was apparently a Supreme Court ruling, and I'm not exactly sure what the SEC is supposed to do about the Supreme Court ruling. You seem to imply that they didn't appeal that, and there's, the Supreme Court's kind of the end point, so uh, I'm not sure how that argument uh, would uh, ultimately play out. On the housing bubble, uh, I thought that you had a, a basic development of the argument, and I thought the one statistic that talked about the uh, level of debt in comparison to income was uh, pretty effective, uh, but you needed to have a little bit more information about why the bubble burst at that particular time, and I think that would have made your argument stronger. All right, thank you. <laughs>